In the earlier segments, Vishwa explained how the term relationship has an important role to play in an RDBMS. The relational model is the base on which an RDBMS is built. In this segment, you will learn more about this relational model. The relational model comprises of three components data structure, data integrity, and data manipulation. We will now look at each of these components in detail, the first component being data structure. You will learn about this component in the forthcoming video. Now let's dive in. So we have been discussing about, you know, uh, the different features of the relational database management system. And we discussed in detail about the different intricacies of that. The next thing that we're going to discuss is about, you know, the different relational models that we follow in any RDBMS. So basically, there are three kind of relational model that we follow. The one is the data structure. Uh, the second talks about the data integrity. And the third talks about the how you manipulate the data. And you also call it data manipulative. So we'll take each of these model one after the another. The first one that is in our hand is data structure. So as the name suggests structure, it basically signifies how you store data in you know in your database how you store data so as already said as already discussed you know we talked about the table so we store data in the tabular format in the relational database management system so let's try to deep dive into this structure right so this is the employee table which is actually representing a real life entity called employee so suppose in the office setting there will be a some person who will be working for that company and that person is being called as an employee and any employee in that particular office setting will having will have some kind of you know id employee id uh, it will have some kind of name and it will be also part of some kind of department so that is a real life entity and when we have to you know represent the same real life entity uh, in the terms of rdbms world we have to store it in the form of the tables like this so this is a structure in which we store the data and if we deep dive into this structure it basically comprises of two things so it comprises of this and this comprises of this the first thing that you see is known as the heading okay so the very first row of this you know matrix structure which is comprised of the columns and the rows the very first row is known as the you know uh, data structure heading now if you see the data structure heading has a part like id it is a part called name and it is a name called department so a heading is composed of the different columns and each of the heading one particular entity so for example id it will consist of two things it will have a name which is an identifier so for example the name is the id and it will also have its type like what kind of data it is so for example id is the name here and its data type is say int which is an integer one two or three similarly the name is a type and its name value is name here itself and its type is a string or a var chart Similarly, this again is a heading whose name is department and its type can be a string or a varchar, right? So the heading basically indicates what are the different names of the column and it also decides what are the type of that column. It helps us in maintaining the data integrity. Like once we define a table, we say that a particular column can hold which kind of data. So for example, if it is a name column, we have to decide that it can only hold a string kind of data. So that is how it helps in the data integrity that we'll be talking up in the coming videos. So this is about the heading. Uh, and the remaining part after the first row uh, is known as, you know, the relation body. So relation body, what it is? It is basically, you know, when you set the values for all the parameters. So for example, say example of this record. So this is a record for one employee whose ID is one. Uh, whose name is Smith and it belongs to a sales department. So this is a record for one of the employees, right? So the record of the employees is being stored as a part of the, uh, you know, uh, a relation body, a relation body. So anything after the header, all the rows that comes after the first row encompasses the body part. So what is that inside body part? So if you take any of the field, for example, this. So this signifies that uh, this particular cell is of type name and its value is Jones. If I take this one, this cell is of type department and its value is sale. So the anything after the header is what that encompasses the body thing. So basically a data structure consists of two things. It consists of the heading as well as the body. Heading describes what is the name of that column and what is the data type that it supports. 
and the body actually describes the actual value that gets stored in the particular database. So this is all about the data structure. In the coming video, we'll talk more into detail about how we ensure data integrity and how the data manipulative works in the relational database management system. So we have been talking about relational model, right? And uh, uh, in the last discussion, we talked about what a data structure is. The next thing that in the relational model is data integrity, right? As the name suggests, it tries to talk more about, you know, how to ensure the data that you are storing in a table is correct, the format of the data is correct, as well as, you know, the relationship between the data is correct, right? So all this is being, you know, taken care of out to the different kind of integrities that is being guaranteed. So the first kind of data integrity guarantee is attribute integrity. So how do we achieve it? So as we, when we're discussing about the data structures, right, in which we talked about relation headers. So what is the relation header it was? It was saying that, uh, you know, in the, the first row of any table consists of all the column names and also you have to specify what type it is, right? So when you say that, when you are defining a data and you are giving it a type, it makes sure that it doesn't allow you to store data of any other type in that particular column. So for example, say I have a column, right? And it has a name, say name, right? And I say that it is of the type string. So now this string is a constraint, which, you know, make sure that anybody who wants to add data to a column name, name has to only store string. If he tries to store any other data type, for example, long or integer or Boolean, it will start failing up, right? So this is what the attribute integrity is. And it is achieved by some kind of constraint that we define when we are creating a table. So this is the meaning of attribute integrity. Now there's something called entity integrity, right? We have already discussed more about what entity is. So entity is basically, you know, when we try to, you know, take example of any real world thing, say for example, person, and we want to store the person attributes in the form of the table, it is what we call it as an entity, right? So in the relational world, whenever we are creating a tabular representation of any entity, and we are trying to maintain some kind of, you know, uh, relationship between these entities, uh, those relationships as well as the data in those, you know, tables should be also, you know, should be also correct. It shouldn't be violating certain kind of scenarios, certain kind of conditions. So that is actually being covered by the uh, entity integrity. So entity integrity is basically ensured by two kind of things. The first is the primary key. So we already have, you know, talked about in the previous video that what primary key is. Uh, a primary key is something which helps you to uniquely identify any row. Again, a primary key can be a single column or uh, it can be a composition of the multiple columns depending on what kind of table you are working on. There are few key attributes of the primary key. Since we are saying that a primary key uniquely identifies each row, so a primary key can never be null. Whether it's a composite primary key or a single primary key, the value of the primary key can never be null. If you set a value of primary key as a null, it will start giving you an error and you are not allowed to set that value as a null in the primary key. Similarly, if it is a composite primary key, which means uh, it is composed of the multiple columns, in all those columns which you have selected as to be a part of primary key, the value cannot be null. So this is one of the key composition, you know, key constraint when you are defining a primary key for any table. Now how it helps? It helps in making sure that your each row in a table is uniquely identified and this is what the entity integrity talks about. The entity integrity says that if you are defining a table, each of your record in a table, each of a row in a table should be uniquely identifiable. You should be able to identify it. You shouldn't be able to, you, it shouldn't be lost. And that can only be possible if you have a properly defined a primary key, which can be a single column or it can be a composition of the multiple columns. So this is how we ensure the entity integrity in the case of the data integrity model. If you've made it this far in the video, give us a like, a share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, tell us what you want to learn next in the comments and then wait or skip the wait and become a data scientist in just 12 months with the executive PG program in data science from IIIT Bangalore powered by Upgrad in collaboration with experts from Meta, Mintra and LinkedIn. Over 20,000 working professionals from over 65 batches have already done this course. Now back to the video. The third and the another important aspect is about the referential integrity. 
Now, differential integrity is something which which talks about the relationship between the tables. It makes sure that you know whatever the relationship that has been defined is actually you know intact. It is not broken somewhere. So, differential integrity we achieve in a relational database world with the help of the foreign key. Again, this is something which we have already discussed, but we will quickly repeat it for a better understanding. So, foreign key is a kind of key which helps you to relate two tables, right? So, for example, there is a table 1 and there is a table 2. If you have to establish some kind of relationship between the two tables, there you make a use of a foreign key. So, let's take an example. So, for example, we have a two tables right now. One table is, say, this is a table called subject. This subject table has two columns, subject ID and the student ID. So, this table is basically giving me a mapping of like which subject, which student is mapped to. So, for example, 101 subject has been studied by the student ID 9912. And then we have another table which is say, you know, student table. And the student table has three columns. One first is the student ID. The second one is the student name. And the third is the student age. Now, if we closely look at the two tables, can we see a relationship? See, for example, this is a column student ID. And there is a column here again in the student ID. Now, if we closely look at these two tables, I can see that, you know, the subject table is related to the student table because the student ID is mentioned in the subject table. So, with the help of this, so example, the student ID is a primary key here and this acts as a foreign key in the subject table. So, this student ID which is acting as a foreign key in the subject table is a primary key in the student table and it helps in maintaining the relationship between a subject table and the student table. So, this is how the foreign key helps in maintaining the relationship. Now, let's come back to again the referential integrity. What is the meaning of this? How, what is the meaning of the referential integrity? Now, let's try to understand with the, with the same example. So, for example, uh, we have a introduction of the student ID both in the student table as well as the subject table, right? So, now if suppose I have to delete the student record, right? Now, if there is a use case in which I have to uh, delete a student record, I cannot go blindly and delete the student from the student table alone because the student table is also referenced in the, in the subject table, right? So, only way to delete a student record is that you have to first come and delete all the records of the student which are there in the subject table, right? So, all the rows in the subject table where the student is mentioned, you have to first delete that and then only you will be allowed to delete the record in the student table. So, this is how the referential integrity helps in, you know, uh, in the accidental deletion, right? So, for example, if this was not there in the place, accidentally somebody would delete a student record from the student table, right? And then somebody will be, when somebody will reference the subject table, they will find some student, but for, for whom there is no record at all. So, that is a kind of inconsistent data. But if the foreign key is in place, referential integrity, you know, will make sure that unless until there is at least one record in the subject table about a particular student, that record cannot be deleted. So, accidental deletion is totally avoided if we are following the foreign key uh, as a referential integrity tool. So, this is all about, you know, uh, data integrity. Uh, in the coming video, we will be talking more about how the data can be manipulated and we will take it further. So, we have been talking about the different kinds of relational models and we have already covered out what is a data structure. Uh, we have already covered about the data integrity and now it's time to talk more about the data manipulative, right? As the name suggests, the manipulative, it means, you know, you're trying to manipulate the relationships, right? Uh, as like in a, in, as a standard sets operation, right, in which you have the two set of the data and then you apply some kind of algebraic operations on the top of it to get some result. Similarly, in the form of, you know, a relational database, when you have two different relations, uh, you can apply some kind of relational algebraic operations on the top of it to, you know, to, modi to take the operation between the two uh, relations and then get a result into a new form of the relation. So, for example, here, uh, there are two tables. Uh, each of the table has similar fields. So, for example, table 1 has a field called employee ID. Another field is name and the third field is uh, department ID. Similarly, we have a similar structure another table which also have like two records. 
Now these two tables are basically what they are the relations and I want to do some kind of algebraic operation on the top of these two tables. Now the algebraic operation can be of many types. It can be a union, it can be an intersection, it can be you know a difference or it can be an addition. So let's take an example we want to bring you know a kind of intersection out of these two tables right. So if you closely look at the records out of all the five records across the two tables we have is a single record for the Shiva which is common in both the tables right. So when we you know when we take these two tables as an input and we perform an algebraic operation of intersection I will get a single record for the Shiva and this is what I am storing as a third table or as a relation. So this is what the data manipulative is. You take as an input the multiple relation or the multiple tables and you try to perform some kind of algebraic operation on the top of it whether it can be union, it can be intersection, it can be you know subtraction, it can be addition, it can be negation, anything of that sort and you end up creating a new relationship from the already existing relation. So this is all about the data manipulative and this with we close on our relational model we have covered all of these three and now I understand we have a solid understanding of the relational model that exists in the relational database management system. Understanding the relational model is crucial for mastering RDBMS. Aage ki socho with Upgrad so you can ensure your skills remain relevant and robust in the face of future data challenges.